The final section of the B1 part of the paper looks at the percentage saturation of blood of carbon monoxide uh, compared with the various concentrations of carbon monoxide with the exposure time in hours. Um, it says a person becomes unconscious at 40% saturation in blood. And you have to work out how much longer it will take for a person to be un become unconscious at carbon monoxide concentration of 400 ppm compared to 500 ppm. So we're looking at 40%. So we just draw a line across so that we can see at what point somebody's likely to become unconscious because they'll become unconscious at 40%. So it starts about there, that's for 400, sorry that's for 500 and that's for 400. So if we look at that, that gap of time there, we can see that that is exactly two hours. Because that's the difference between those two times there. An unconscious patient can be treated with oxygen. The patient needs to breathe 100% oxygen at high pressure. Suggest how this treatment helps the body recover from carbon monoxide poisoning. So the first thing to, the first thing to think about is what actually is formed when you are breathing pure oxygen. So you will form, try to form oxyhemoglobin. I am having to look at my notes here to get the spelling right. Okay, oxyhemoglobin. Okay, and then you form it more readily than combining carbon monoxide. with haemoglobin. And that's it. The, the bit that the examiner was really after was the idea that uh, if you've, if you've, if you've got 100% uh, oxygen at high pressure, that helps more oxyhemoglobin to form, therefore it forms more readily than the carbon monoxide bonds with the haemoglobin, so it will help to, uh, to decrease the concentration of, uh, of um, carbon monoxide in the bloodstream. The examiner was particularly looking for reference to haemoglobin. Mm -hmm.